Yeah, good mate. Thanks for having me. We went the hardest in the, the celebrations. Can't say myself, can I? Uh, <laughs> You sort of almost got to tell yourself that you're a, you're a big game player or a mm. big finals player. And so somehow I thought, well, just because I play well as a 13 year old, I have to play well in the grand final. Me and, me and Cogs are um, a couple of good WA boys and we, we do get a bit affectionate with each other, always giving each other kisses and stuff. <laughs> nah, not really, just, you know, a manly kiss yeah. on the cheek every now and then. Guys, welcome back to the Bray and Ethan podcast, episode 91, I believe, Ethan. Mm. Uh, it says 90 in there. I forgot but to update it last, again. <laughs> yeah, Dan Curtin was episode 90, so we are flying through. Nine to go before 100, and I reckon we should do something potentially a bit special for Oh, we should. Raise the bat. You have to. Yeah. And, of course, you can head over to Skinbro and Hat Locker and use code Bray and Ethan 20 for 20% off across both websites and get some absolute bargains, Ethan, as they kindly help us out here. We've got two NBA, NBA Eastern Conference hats in here. We've got Philly and Cleveland. Really liking yes. the Cleveland one. You are as well. Not the team necessarily, yes. but the, oh, the material. I don't mind it. Yeah, it's very, very nice. Um, but I know you're going to get onto this more, but this man joining us today, I was at the Wacker for that state game against Vic Country, and I was wondering who the hell is this bloke and his name is Riley Wills, and he starred. He was one of the guys that impressed me on that day, but you've got more for sure. Yeah, well, joining us in the studio, <laughs> the man you're talking about, he's putting together a fair season. The numbers, they'll tell you the story themselves. Don't you worry about mm. that. But uh, very interesting chat. Very much looking forward to this with uh, some of the questions that were sent in. But Riley Wills, Willsy, welcome. Thank you for having me, boys. Good to be here. First one of these sort of things. Uh, media, how, how are you feeling about it? We told you off air there's going to be no pressure, pretty cruisy. So um, no, you must be excited for uh, particularly the questions that were sent in. Yeah, looking forward to it. I've watched a few before and they, they seem pretty good, pretty cruisy. Yeah. So your third year of Colts, a local boy from Corrine and Warwick Senior High. So around my sort of region in the northern mm. suburbs. It feels nice, I must say, <laughs> walking, meeting, I guess, is from the same sort of area you can talk about sort of mates and, and different connections which is probably more usually of the locals yeah. as well perhaps yeah. <laughs> um but how would you describe your footy journey to date sort of a broad question to kick kick things off but yeah, how do you talk how do you describe it i'd like to say a roller coaster you know like there's been ups and downs uh, a lot of injuries but yeah it's kind of just good to be back playing footy now yeah how was the um how's the pathway like when did you first head down to subi and that sort of thing because you've been there for a while yeah, I think it would have been around age 15 when it was like under 15s and all that sort of stuff. That was probably when I first started. Yeah. And then I think after that it was Futures and then Colts. Yeah. yeah. Would have been a couple of handy boys like in front of you to watch as well. Yeah, a group. lot of that, like Neil and Jono yeah. and all, all of them. Yeah. So Stars and doing their thing now on the AFL level. But you were added to the State 18s team this year as an overager. Did you feel... It coming from your form in the Colts and what was it like finding out that news? Yeah, well, it was actually a funny story when I found out that I was got the call up. Uh, Jonesy rang me and at first I thought it was just like work because I worked for the Waffle Commission. Yeah. Yep. So I didn't really think anything too <laughs> too much of it. And then when he said, oh, you've been added into the state team, it was kind of just like, yeah, blown away and absolutely stoked. Yeah. yeah so no, no, like. Um, feeling that it was coming, like no word yeah, from anyone, just total nothing, shock. Yeah, total shock, a eh? complete surprise. Yeah. Which is probably, I guess, the way you'd want to hear about it. It just must make your whole day when you would have found oh, out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, made my day, made, made your yeah. week. Yeah. Rest yeah. of the year, pretty much. Yeah. Just um, circling back to last year, obviously, Subi Colts made finals. Uh, one of those teammates, Robbie Hansen, we saw, I think we saw you in a video on his debut with the Roos jumper, yeah. number 46. I don't know if you bought that or not. Or nah, you... that was um, Tyler Senge, Rooster. Yeah. He, yeah, he was straight on to it. Eh? As yeah. soon as he figured out he got drafted, I think he got it from the AFL store. <laughs> number 46 as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, just like on that, what, what's it been like seeing, I guess, guys your age drafted? Um, has there been a bit of mixed emotions with that heading into 2023? Because obviously you're you were eligible last year. Yeah, well, oh, it's been great for to see all of them get drafted and that. And like just to know I was, I was playing with them and you, it just seems so surreal. Like you're yeah. playing with them one year, the next year watching him play his first game, he's like out there on the t on the big stage. Yeah, and Tyrell's doing his thing at the Eagles as well. Yeah. So he yeah. was a big part of that team. Of course. Well, we asked the same thing to Oscar, who is another overager, obviously, in that States team with you. Do you feel limited as to how much you can improve over, the, I guess, the championships or even the Colts season and what are the pros and cons of it, do you think? 
Um, in a way, yes, but I think this season coming into it, obviously after missing last season, I kind of just pictured myself as a normal age player this year and kind of like put all that other stuff aside. And yeah, it was just all about slowly improving and getting better each yeah. day. Yeah. And you're probably pretty grateful for the opportunity in the first place, like with the champs yeah, to be exactly. there, regardless of, I guess, being a year older. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and on those champs, he had a birthday over there uh, yeah. until we do our research here. Don't you worry <laughs> about that. Um, it would have been good fun having a birthday over there. Uh, yeah, was how was it travelling and, I guess, playing at some of those venues? Oh, it was like an absolute crazy experience seeing how all the, like, the professional clubs and that do everything and that. It was actually like, it was quite weird having the birthday over there because it was the only day I didn't see any family. Yeah, okay. Like the day before we flew out, saw them in the morning. The day after, you know, saw them at night. But yeah, now all the boys got around me and everything. Uh, Luke even went to the cafe that morning and bought me a cupcake. Nice. Which is, yeah, nice gesture What sort of cupcake? Him. I think it was a blueberry muffin. Yeah, okay. yeah. Had to check with Dowsey though if I was allowed to eat it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah before, before a game. Um, did you grow, like, grow close with any boys in particular? Um, mainly like the midfield group, the players that I was playing with. Um, yeah, got along well with all of them and pretty much just everyone. Like, they're all so nice and all welcoming and that. Well, uh, you might have known this question was coming, but there was a bit of a scuffle, obviously, at the Wacker Hut. To, or it was actually just after the halftime sign, I think it was. Harley Reid, is it true that he called you ugly? Yes, yes, that's true. Um, <laughs> a bit more it. words through that, but, yeah, I was, I was kind of like, I lined up on him at the start of the game and, you know, he introduced, he said hi and that, like, I'll see him, oh, he's a pretty good bloke, you know. Yeah. And then I think it was about second quarter he was run to a stoppage and I checked his run and he yeah didn't like it turned around and said oh probably shouldn't say it but he's like oh you're an ugly and yeah. drop the c-bomb on me <laughs> yeah yeah we have heard that yeah so there's a bit of a uh, couple words exchanged bit of a heated so is know, that what exchange uh, is that what um lighted up the the little scuffle um I don't think it was actually a couple of boys said to me oh mate you've started a, a big halftime brawl but <laughs> going back on it I think Colton got into one of their boys like gave him a bit of a nudge and then it all just like yeah it all blew up from there because there was a goal kicked on I was looking at the vision yesterday there was a goal kicked on the siren and then that's like I guess where it yeah. escalated yeah, a bit that's more from where it all started so I guess you don't have to say if there are any swear words or anything but what did you say back to Harley Oh, I said, oh, you're pretty up yourself, aren't you? And, yeah, got back into him. I think I said something about you're not the prettiest bloke yourself either. Yeah, so. I, I, would, I would back you on that one. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's definitely a couple. It's a story know, to tell, though, words. like, moving forward. It is. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's pretty something, you know, to, I guess, not hang your hat on, but, like, it happened and you can always yeah. tell it back. Um, but coming back to Colts, the numbers have been outstanding for you in the midfield. What's been the key this year? Because I'm sure it doesn't just happen without hard work. Yeah, I think, um, like, routine. I'm very, like, tight, stick to my routine and that and go through the same things, like, have the same breakfast every morning, same food, get the strapping done, do everything leading up to the game. Um, I also like to go have a kick, like, each night before the game, which I find helps kind of get your head around things and that. But, yeah. So... What, do you go to just a local park with yeah. a mate or something and just have a kick? I'll or? just head down to East Hammersley by myself and then... Shout out. <laughs> yeah, kick at, kick at the footy posts, kick a couple of goals yeah, and that. Right. Yeah. Interesting. That's How many footies did you take? Did you just take say, two so you don't have to fetch just, after Just the four? one, yeah. Work on a bit of fitness too, chasing yeah, it around. That's fair. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. What's the what's the role like, I guess? Champs, Subi, like obviously in the midfield, like probably not the biggest midfield. I mean, you're not, at the same time, you're not a small bloke. Yeah. So what's that role like? And I guess strength and even players you model your game on. Um, well, it kind of changed a bit with uh, champs. I've, I've, at Subi, I was used to being like the go-to, the like number one midfield, always getting a hit to you and that. But um, at champs, it was more playing a defensive role and doing like the stuff for the team because obviously there's a lot more like crazy good midfielders. You had Hawley and Curdo just mm. being able to run through everyone. Yeah. So, yeah, but then going back to Subi, it was kind of just working on stuff and, like, teaching everyone stuff that I've learned through the champs, like a couple tips around stoppages and that, yeah. And then with the player I model myself off, it used to be Robbie Gray. Okay. I'm a massive, yeah, massive Robbie Gray fan. But um, since he retired, it's been more like Zach Butters because he yeah. plays like similar. So you're a Port fan? 
Yeah, Port fan. Yeah. Okay, nice. Don't meet too many Port fans, but oh, yeah. I know a couple. They're, they're quite. They tragic. are quite rare over yeah. here. I find. Yeah. yeah. The ones that I do. The ones that I know. Yeah. The very I know the one. Yeah, I know one of the blokes yeah. you're talking about. And another um, one is I played a bit of cricket and footy with. Mm. He loves it as well. Yeah. Big big fan. I mean, I'd say they're flying, but they've been down a bit in recent they weeks. Have. But you'd and still they're struggle to get a win probably against Geelong. Yeah. I know this is going to come out mm. after the game. Bit irrelevant, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've done, apparently they haven't won in Geelong since like 2007 yeah. or something. Something crazy. Like that. I don't know. You'd have to lock them in for top four still though. So they're a chance. You would. Well. You're coming off a bit of a high two weeks ago from at recording time. You ended Perth's undefeated streak. Yeah. What has this done for the boys' belief uh, as you head into the bye, winning four on the trot? Oh, I think it's fired everyone up, eh? Hey? Like, it was quite a heated game, that one, too. You know, there were a couple, you know, like fights going on and that. Yeah, yeah. it was. Which you're not too proud of for the boys. But, yeah, it's definitely given everyone confidence, knowing that we can match it against the best. I think, yeah, it's a good thing for the team. Yeah, quite a low scoring game as well. I yeah, think it was like yeah. 50 to 40 or something. Or something. Yeah, it was yeah. very low scoring. Yeah. yeah, that was. I reckon that might have like shaken them a bit up a bit as well. Like probably would have had like gone into that game as favourites, and yeah. then like you boys have just I guess made it realise that like it's probably a bit of a closer competition than our equal top. I yeah. Think, so like I always had belief we could match it with them because even though. They like flogged us in the first game. I think it was only 17 points we lost by. Yeah. Considering I think they kicked seven goals or something in the first quarter yeah, right. to our like one or zero. So yeah. What do, what do you reckon the reason was for such a low scoring game in that? Do you reckon it was just because both sides came out real defensive? Because I'm pretty sure it was a pretty nice day. Yeah, I think just. I yeah, it was just everyone was hard at it. You know, nobody yeah. was giving up anything too easy. Yeah. And uh, a Jack Clark medal chance, you'd have to think, with some of the numbers you're putting up. Uh, but I guess we'll put that aside, <laughs> the individual bit, for a second. Um, the back end of the year comes. What, what have you got your eye on? Like, is the draft a realistic chance for you? Um, because you've, you know, the way you've been able to push your name forward, it's the stocks are rising, I guess yeah. is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, obviously, you know, to be picked up would be great. You know, it's been a dream of mine for a long time, but... You know, if that doesn't happen, I'm happy to go back and keep working on it, keep trying to chase that dream, yeah. And with the season coming, I guess, to the later stages, finals and stuff, have you been, like, preparing for a tag or anything? I don't know if that's a thing in cults, but, yeah, I mean... No, I'm not too name, sure you're allowed to tag, <laughs> eh, but... I guess, like, your name would probably come up as one of the first to stop from other teams, so... Yeah. Have you been preparing for a bit more attention? Oh, a little bit, like, a couple of boys have been saying, oh, you know, you might get a bit of attention this week and that, but... I like to just focus on myself and how I'm going to go about things. Like, we've got a couple strategies if that does come, but, yeah, I like, yeah, don't take too much thought into it. For sure. Well, uh, the Subi League boys are also flying at the moment with a big win over East Perth on the weekend just gone. Uh, do you have much interaction with the league boys? Um, we do, like, a transition block where you, like, go up for a couple of weeks yep. and train with them. Um, I went up, I think it was the start, like quite early in the year and yeah, enjoyed, you know, the challenges and that up there, yep. training against bigger bodies and that, but yeah, haven't had too much interaction with them yeah, okay. yeah, since the start of the season. And obviously 19 now, so how's, I guess, the day-to-day schedule treating you off the field with what you're doing to balance things, I guess, with your job through the commission and just like... Yeah study and that sort of thing oh it's pretty cruisy to be honest yeah. i won't lie about it yeah i do get it taken out of me a bit with how little i'm at uni i'm there three days a week i think it's max one one and a half hours a day like that's the longest i'm there nice. doing sport teaching so yeah pretty cruisy there and then with work really enjoy that doing football clinics yeah yeah get about like a shift a week which is real good yeah, well, you say three days a week. I know you said it's not like an all-day thing, but I reckon there's plenty of people out there who probably just do uni online or maybe head, head in less than that. So. Yeah, yeah. So what what are the uh, clinics like? Are you guys at a local school in your area or are you guys going all around Perth? Um, usually it's like uh, club-based. So for Subi, I do like the Subi the district. Subi teams, yeah. yeah, and it's usually like primary schools go out to them and sometimes I'm there for a day, sometimes yeah. only a few hours. Yeah. So enjoying it? Good fun? Yeah, great fun. Down, really I guess enjoy it's down it. the path that you, I guess, studying as well. Yeah, it all, it all interlinks a fair yeah, bit. Yeah. Which is good. Uh, Instagram Q&As, you know, we know you've been looking forward to this. Uh, <laughs> thanks to Skinbro and Hat Locker, and you can, of course, head to Bray and Ethan on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter to 
ask some future questions to any future guests and of course TikTok where you can find some quality snippets uh, from each episode on Bray Ethan unfortunately as we've said before the and was stolen from us by someone you'll find it though you will first one uh, Sam Van Ryan what's it like coming from the hood <laughs> oh, we have a bit of a joke about this because uh, I used to play him in school footy um, yeah and going to Warwick we were talking about it was like the golden triangles and all of that and he was showing me all like where it's all based and that. And I asked him, I was like, so where would Warwick be in Hammersley in that area? And he's like, oh, I don't think they have a triangle. So he made up, it's, <laughs> I said, it's probably the wooden triangle. Yeah. I'll throw this one to you, Ethan. What's it like being from the hood as well? Oh, I mean, I used to live in the hood. I mean, I recently moved house, still from the same area. Um, it's a nice area. It's nice, quiet. Yeah. Can't you know, complain. There's a couple troubles going on around there, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Whisper Walsh, a couple from him. How do you get such big biceps? <sighs> well, probably just a lot of gym, to be honest. Yeah. Um, not everyone's as gifted as he is to have the size of the legs he has, but that's the one one area of improvement I need to work on a bit. Might have to take a couple of tips from him. Uh, another one from Whisper. What else have you ordered from Panda Buy? Uh, no comment for that yeah, one. No yeah, yeah, no comment for that's that true. one. That's, that's good. You've got to be strong and feel free to just... You know, direct it back to these people yeah, asking yeah. the questions <laughs> as well. Definitely give it back yeah. to them, yeah. Uh, Oscar Hein Dastin. <laughs> Willsie, what's it like to be so good at making TikToks? <laughs> I knew I'd probably cop something for that. Um, yeah, it's just a bit of fun with the boys, you know. Yeah, yeah a couple of them asked, oh, let's do a TikTok and that. So, yeah. yeah, not one to say no, why not? He's posting some every day, yeah, I'm gonna, saying. I was going to so. say, if Oscar's saying, what's it like to be so good? <laughs> that's, that must be pretty good coming from, yeah, I guess, the king of Yeah, he's asked to make TikToks. one or two together a few times, so I think we'll have to, you know, <laughs> yeah. get something going with that. Collab. Yeah, <laughs> get a collab going. Another TikTok-related question from Ben Steinman 8. Tell us about your recent TikToks. Ooh. What was the last one? Uh, I think it was one with um, Austin Chapman and Malachi Champion. Yeah. Uh, they're pretty keen on making a TikTok. <laughs> so, yeah, it took us a couple tries to do it. Got a bit of hate for it because apparently we weren't in sync or something. <laughs> but I thought it was pretty yeah, good. Unless you're trying. It's all yeah. per- you can't be perfect. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Cosa underscore Whitnell. Most annoying bloke at our school. Please don't say me. <sighs> Gosh, that's a tough one. Um... Yeah, couldn't couldn't think of one to be honest. Like out of our main group, no one's really like annoying or anything. All of them are good blokes in that. Yeah. Don't yeah. want to throw anyone under yeah, the bus. Yeah, don't, don't want to <laughs> stitch anyone up. Uh, Riley Mayfield, thirteen. How many autographs have you given out? Oh gosh, this bloke. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just want to say, firstly, uh, Mayo, I'm quite disappointed in you. He's ditched the boys for his missus. Has he? Yeah. Um, yeah, not a good thing, eh? No. Yeah, so no comment for his question. He doesn't yeah. doesn't get an answer for that. Yeah. Charlie Keast 04, move to Claremont next year, question mark. Yeah, no, I was trying to get him over to Subi this year, but he, <laughs> he chose the uh, the Claremont boys instead, yeah, as he should. They're on top of the ladder, but be good to beat them coming e- up. Equal top. Equal yeah, e- top. equal top, yeah. Luca Kenfield, one. Did you end up getting that licence for your guns? Um, no comment. No, no comment for that one. <laughs> we covered on the guns already as well. Yeah, so yeah. exactly. Uh, Tom underscore Snells. Ask him about his brother Brett and his TNs. Oh gosh. So um, Dad, my na- that's his name, Brett. Uh, yeah, he's quite into the TNs. Okay. Eh? I've, I've told him what the the meaning is behind them and that. But yeah, he reckons they're comfy. They're good looking <laughs> shoes. But yeah, the boys, the boys give me a bit of it for that. But yeah, no, it's funny. This is good. Uh, Devin Matskov, remember when I taught you how to kick goals at school? <laughs> yeah, old Devin, uh, definitely, you know, little fella, good at footy, you know. Definitely taught me a few things along the way, I'd like to say. <laughs> Tyler Senge, who would you say your partner in crime is? Oh, definitely Senge, you know. Yeah, I love that bloke. He's a great footballer. You know, love the way how he's doing his thing out there each week. Definitely putting in the effort and that, getting his name up there. Yep. Uh, Hazer, Hazer.priv, I think. Uh, what was high school like? High school was good. It was it was different being in Warwick, like compared to all the other high schools, the things that I've heard about there. But it was an unreal experience. And I yeah, cherished every moment of it, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Not your typical um, 
private school, which is probably good to be honest. Not not anything against them, but like it's good to hear different. Yeah, it's, different it's character building yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, where are we up to? WA, WA footy, footy prospects. prospects. Yep. Describe why the culture at Subi is so successful. Um, I think like this year personally for the Colts, like a couple of years ago, like footy was just a thing for me. Like I enjoyed it, but this year I've noticed how much like I've enjoyed it being around all the boys in that, and like after a day of work or uni. I just like look forward to going to footy training every day. It's something I really look forward to doing. Yeah, like an outlet and you can have fun. Yeah. And like speak with your mates. And yeah, you're around your mates and that and everything. Yeah. So yeah. Sure. Uh, Lisa Newick, do you think Big Newey will ever come back to the waffle? <sighs> I hope he does. Um, Ryan Newick, she's talking about there. Obviously played last year and did really good. Gave yeah. it away this year um, for probably reasons you know, girlfriend and that, living living his life. But, mm. yeah, you know, he's just doing his own thing now. Hopefully yeah. it'd be nice for him to come back to Subi and play. Yeah. yeah. You see you see guys do it, like, obviously at that age, he's got a lot of time. So yeah, exactly. hopefully that option there. And, like, he's definitely got the, the talent to come back and that. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Was Lenka. Not Baz Lenka. Not Baz Lenka. <laughs> Who's the best leg spinner you've played with? <sighs> it would have to be him, eh? Yeah, is yeah. we played Scarborough together, yeah. um, district or club? Yeah, district, district. and played with Neil Erasmus too. Yeah, um, the Pullinger boys, Bobby like, Connolly, maybe he was in the year above, I think. Okay. But yeah, he was yeah. he was around the club a fair bit. Yeah, definitely. Bit of a cricketer yourself then? Oh, uh, I enjoyed it. Like playing at Scarborough was probably like my best year of cricket. We won the premiership there, which was good. What year? What <sighs> age group? God, would have been under 14s, 14, I yeah. think. Big yeah. celebrations there, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> a few lemonades. <laughs> yeah, a couple soft drinks and that, yeah. Uh, Riz Crane. This isn't a qu- – well, it's a question, but it's just more of this, uh, more a statement. The Riley and Lockie duo at Subo, Subi Colts. I think it's all Lo- – I think he's asking, do you prefer, like, the Riley or the Lockie duo at Subi Colts? It I think been, that's what it's It has about. been a rivalry. The amount of Rileys we have – I think we've got four Rileys in our team. Right. I think there's – Three, three or four Lockies. Okay, so that's what it is. Yeah, we've pretty much been saying we could make like a, a midfield of Rileys and a midfield of Lockies and just put them at each other. <laughs> but yeah, I'd have to back in the, the Riley duo. We've beaten them in a few uh, handball game. Well, I don't think you're going to beat the Saints with fielding a whole team full of Jacks. <laughs> yeah. That's the only thing that's, <laughs> that's you're losing there. Yeah. Uh, Riley Dot Groves, favourite John Batten moment. See, <laughs> beloved teacher from what I've heard at Warwick. Yeah, Batty, the footy teacher. Um, you know, you can't hate the bloke. Everyone <laughs> loves him. Oh, there's there's too many moments, but probably during COVID, he's a real germaphobe. And yeah. so, you know, he'd be hand sanitising 24-7, uh, wouldn't let you near him at all, you know, wouldn't be having anything <laughs> yeah. of it. Yeah. No, that would be a lot, especially when you've gone through a whole, like, what, five years or so at yeah. Warwick. You can't really pinpoint one. Oh, yeah. Even, like, the camps and that, I remember, it was a Pinjarra camp we went away on, and um, it was a great camp. I remember the night, like, we were all sitting around, and he was playing all these old tunes and yeah. that, and everyone was loving it, yeah. getting around with that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cooper.Granland, underscore. Now, this question kind of annoys me as well, but <laughs> why do you tee off with an iron on a par five? <laughs> Well, it's a, it's a bit of a long story, but I'm not too good with my drivers and I've never probably never hit a driver straight in a game of golf. So I thought, you know, the chances of me hitting at a good driver is probably just as good as what I'd hit a good iron. I cop a lot for it, but mm. I'm the type of guy that likes to putt from the middle of the fairway to about 100 <laughs> metres out. So, yeah, definitely a different type of golfer, but you know, I stick to what I know best and, yeah. Yeah, well, my theory is with the par fives, because I struggle to hit a straight drive as well. Distance is key on a par five, I feel. If you can't hit a, a driver at least, I'm going to say at least 150 metres on a par five, then you're in trouble. An iron, what iron are you using off the tee? A three? Yeah, I think so. I wouldn't know too much about yeah. it. I just, it's okay. not an X. He doesn't. Yeah, yeah, I just pick a club and go, but 
Slow and steady wins the race, yeah. you know. Yeah. I just feel you need those meters early on a par five. And <laughs> the just, driver is your easy best friend there. You you no are dealing with the uh, CEO of an Instagram page called Perth Golf Championship. <laughs> so, yeah, no, nah, the, yeah. the guys I play punk. with, I just let them hit it out into the bush and I stick straight <laughs> along the fairway. So that's how I, that's mm. how I get by. Yeah. One of my mates is a, well, was a, like a serial pest for using a iron on a par five, but he's <laughs> finally re- put his driver back in his bag. So he... It's driving now. Yeah. Lucky a couple last driving range trips might be the go there and work <laughs> on it. Yeah. yeah. Lucky last question. Thanks to everyone who sent. Yeah, plenty. Plenty uh, of time. I think we had to cut a few out, but probably for obvious reasons. Uh, Landy <laughs> underscore four. What is your opinion on ice, hockey, and baseball? Oh, um, he's an American Canadian bloke. So, yeah, he's very strong with his yeah. ice, hockey, and baseball. I'm not the biggest, you know, person to go watch a ice hockey or baseball game. I remember I went to the Crown once and we watched, it was like the Australian team play, I think it was Korea or something. And yeah. I'm not going to lie, I was falling asleep most <laughs> of the time. I didn't want to be there. But, yeah, he's a big advocator for them, says it's great sport and that, and he reckons footy's worse than that. But, yeah, there's always a bit of argument between me and him about that. Have you watched, like, the Stanley Cup or the NHL? No, nah, nothing no. like that. Well, yeah. when I was working on SEN... We had a guy over in the States who'd call up every night and just chat with him for about half an hour about all the American stuff. And he's like, just watch a bit of the NHL or Stanley Cup. You'll love it. Yeah. I watched about 10 minutes of it. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty cool. But then just lost all attention. I think the fights in that would probably be what would, you know, get you most yeah. interested. It's just chaotic. They just run through each other. Well, yeah. Not run, but like, you know what I mean? They just yeah. go straight through them. It's crazy. Almost seems like there's no rules. <laughs> it does, yeah. Uh... All right, let's move on to the quiz. Now, let's just have a look. Colton, your Subiaco teammate, is on 10, which is par. But then got a couple of Swan Districts boys. So my Region. local boys, Riley Hardman and Luke Kelly, both sit up on 12. Dan Curtin, last week, 11.5. And then, yeah, a couple of state boys, Clay Hall, 11. Sam Van Royen, 11. Cohen Sanchez, 11. Colton, 10. Oscar, 10. And Colin Livingston, 10. It's the par, isn't it? Yeah. Or you could be like Toby McQuilk and, and be on yeah. six down the bottom. You have said you tuned in, so you might. You're probably going to know. Have you, have you done your research? Oh, I've done a little bit of research, yeah. yeah. Got prepared for it. Yeah, it always helps. Yeah. All right, well, let's kick it off. Same question for everyone. What is your height and weight on the Waffle website? Oh, 181 centimetres and 75 kilos. Right. Bang on the money. Is that correct? One. Like, Is actually it? correct? Um, I did a bit of measuring with Tyler Sench because we're around the same height and he, like, pretty much the same height. We measured it at yep. Subi once and he we he updated it the mid-season, I think, and so he said he was 181, so I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> and then I've been ranging in between, like, 72 to, I think I got up to 78 last year. So, yeah. Yeah, well, Great. Zach Mainwaring is about 181 and Jai Bolt and his Claremont teammate refers to him as a jockey. So <laughs> that, um, It's very stiff, yeah. yeah. It's just very stiff. Number two, how many goals have you kicked in your Colts career? <laughs> um, I was told last uh, training this week, I think I've kicked 13 goals this year. Um, years before, I think last year I kicked... Three or four, so I'd like to say I don't think I kicked any the first year, so I'd like to say fifteen. Oh, bang! bang on the money. That's was, I, I thought you were going to miss that yeah. because you made your, your theory there wasn't adding up because you said you kicked thirteen this year and then three or four years before. Yeah. I was like, oh, he's going to go a bit over <laughs> here, but he yeah. somehow pulled it back to fifteen. Yeah, that's that Warwick math. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Shout out. Uh, question number three: True or false question? Are you the highest, highest disposal leader in the entire Waffle Colts season as it stands? Before round 17 or whatever we are coming into. True or false? Ooh. I think a few boys may have caught up to me through missing the state games. Um, I'll, I'll back myself in and say true. It is. Damn true. It is. Yeah. Oh, nice. Three, three from, from three. three. Good start. Yes, very good start. Number four, your Subi teammate, Tyler Senge, is in second. How many are you ahead of him by? Wouldn't be much. I think my, my dad said something about it last week. He said he's catching ya. Oh, it'd, be, it'd be under five. I think it was, was it three? 
Unfortunately, it's eight. That's eight. Oh, yeah. so it's still got a little bit on him. 287 to 279. All right. He'll, yeah. he'll probably catch me soon. A yeah. <laughs> couple ball magnets at the top, though, yeah. so representing Subi. What's third? Well, oh, I don't know. I think What's there was the another Subi member in, like, not far after that as well. So how do you, how do you find the stats on the waffle? Website? Just waffle. There's, like, a player stats, and then you just got to, like, filter it to be, like, Colts. Right, yeah. I'll have a look at that. Well, no, I, go, I think if you go season, then go... Stats at the bottom. Oh, yeah. Stats. And then... Players. And then go 2023 20, and then just filter it to go Colts. Anyway, you go yeah, ask yep. the next question, Nathan. Uh, so we're three from four. True or false, there was no one older than you in the state 18th this year. I'd say, yeah, true. There was no yeah, one. I, yeah. I remember everyone give it to me. Yeah. Oh, you're such a grandpa in that. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'll say true for that. You, Because your birthday was... Early July. Did you play yeah. a game as a nineteen-year-old? Yeah, played. Yeah, last game was yeah. as a nineteen-year-old. Yeah, yeah. yeah, grandpa. <laughs> so I was yeah walking out there as the oldest, but probably one of the smallest on the field. So four from five. Four from five. Yeah. Number six. I've got that. Got that. Will Cassidy from uh, East Perth. He's sitting in third on two hundred and fifty-eight. So it's a decent margin. It's pretty much a game ahead, realistically, about twenty on disposals. So yeah, it's not bad. Um, number six, bro. Question number six. True or false? Another one. The last two times a Subiaco player has won a Jack Clark medal, they've also won the Colts flag in the same year. I know LV, they did it that year. Um, that was 21, wasn't it? Yeah. 2020. 20, yeah, around there. Um, I'll say true. I'm not too sure who the last one was, but yeah, I'll, I'll go true. It, it is correct. True. I think it was Liam Hickmott in 2018. Yeah, so yeah. Okay. We are flying. Five from six. Looking yep. good. Number seven. This might. This is where it might ramp up <laughs> in terms of difficulty. Number seven. You beat East Perth by a point on the weekend. What was the margin at three-quarter time? <sighs> exact. We need the exact margin. I know during the fourth quarter we were up by... 25. I remember watching it back on the streamer. Yeah. I can't remember if there are any goals kicked. I'll say 25. Well, I can tell you there would have been one goal kick, so it was 19. Oh, it was 19. Yeah. Close. Pretty close. Yeah. I was going to say, if you said three goals, I would have probably given yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I knew we were up by a bit, and they, they ended up kicking, it was like three goals in the space of five minutes, and that when, that's when everyone knew it was like, oh, we've got to lock it down now. Yeah. 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 All right, we are still five from seven. Yeah. So this is pretty eight. much you need all these questions right to get to that 12 margin, I think. Anyway, question number eight. eight. The game was also the first game this year you've personally given away more free kicks than you received. You received two. How many did you give away? I think I got caught holding the ball once. Gave away one for a throw or incorrect disposal. Um, there was a high tackle that I wasn't too happy about, but, <laughs> you know, I'll cop that. I'll say three. I can't remember anymore. Yeah, bang on three. Yeah, three. Not bad. Six from eight. Six from eight. Number nine. Who was the closest Subiaco teammate to your number 11 for WA? Like closest in numbers, like, yeah, like was, yeah. up or down, like Guernsey number. So closest Subi teammate who was in the state team as well. Gosh, I'm sh I'm shocking with numbers. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Um, really, probably need this one. In I the think bag. in height order, Lance would probably have to be. I'll go Lance. He'd probably have to be the closest. Yeah, number nine. Yeah, I think a couple of the other boys are in like the twenties and stuff. So yeah, yeah that's yeah. that, that was a pretty big boy. So yeah, I yeah, don't think that'd be too close. Seven from nine. Seven from nine. So we can potentially jump Equal up to a top. 12 if you can get five points from this. Yeah. So question number 10. It's not a who am I this week. It's just a point for each answer, I guess, because there's five answers here. There have been five times you have taken eight marks in a Colts game this year. Name each team, so one point for each team, that you've done this against. I know Perth. Perth's one of them. Yeah. Correct. Um, Four more teams. Oh, yeah. West Perth, I'd, I'd like to back in that. Yes, yeah. two. Um, maybe East, East Perth at the start of the year. Correct. That's yeah. three. We're up to ten now. Um, 
think take your time with the guests because I guess you only get one guess. Like you only yeah. get five guesses in total. You've taken three, so. Peel thunder. Incorrect. No, one. One more. Ooh. One more guess. Swannies. Incorrect. Yeah, incorrect. As well. So, the cor- other answers were East Freo. Oh yeah. And Perth again. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 So Perth, East Perth, West Perth, East Fro and then Perth again. Yeah. So that takes us to ten. Unfortunately. I shouldn't have read out the current points because <laughs> as soon as I did that, mm. struggled to get another one. Yeah, choked Still under though, the pressure. Yeah. You're not really like it's not a bad score. Mm, you and Colton might have to face off for the yes. smarter yeah. Subiaco <laughs> player. Both yeah. on ten. Didn't find that too hard, did you? Nah, not too challenging. Yeah. A couple of the questions, yeah, were a bit challenging, yeah. but I think I've got to do a bit more research. Yeah. <laughs> so what, are you someone who goes back and looks at, look at your stats after each game? Um, I do. I'm not one to, like, go on it after the game. Like, usually my mate Cass, because he's not been playing, he usually tells yeah. me after. Sends the stuff to you, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, li- I like going back and looking at it um, just to see, like, how it went. But I'm kind of one to think that I haven't done haven't got as many as what I've actually done. Mm. Like, I think it was the Peel game when I had 30. After the game, I remember I was quite, like, down because I thought I only had, like, 16 or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then my mate and Cass told me, he was like, oh, you had 30 today. I remember, like, I was just like, he's talking to me. I was like, you're joking, surely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's probably a good way to go about it as well. If you pay less attention, mm. it yeah. probably works in your favour. Okay, well, yep, that puts you on 10 points. So it's a par for the quiz. We'll take that. Joining a lot of others on 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven others are on 10. I mean, we got rid of the bonus point system, so that's probably not helping separating some guys because we did the bonus points last year. Yeah, we did. But then again, I think it just makes yeah. it a bit more even. Yeah, a bit more simple. Yep. All right. Well, we've got a couple of uh, lovely gifts to give you. Uh, thanks to Skinbro and uh, Hat Locker as well. But, Wilsey, can't thank you enough for coming on and all the best uh, we well, have got a weekend off this week but all the best for the rest of the season and uh, what the end of the year may hold yeah cheers for having me guys really appreciate it been a pleasure uh, Bray and Ethan for 20% off at both skinbro.com and hatlocker.com.au Ethan which is yep. very nice get yourself a nice little gift for yourself or someone else indeed, indeed. if you're listening on Spotify Apple or wherever you listen to your podcast you can also head over to YouTube Vice versa as well, YouTube to your yeah, podcast platform or whatever. Smash that, what is it, subscribe button? Or yeah, you can rate s- button. <laughs> smash the subscribe button on, I guess, pretty much all platforms. Um, like some videos on YouTube if you like them. Uh, just no dislikes, that would be nice. Uh, and then your five star ratings as well on the podcast platforms would be very, very nice. Yeah. We would appreciate that a lot. All right, Ethan, thanks for jumping on again as always and we'll catch you next week. Catch you later.